What's going on guys, it's Cliffy here. The average has started to drop just a little bit because we have been in a little bit of poor form as of late, but we have restricted to Delhi the Delhi Daredevil, sorry, uh, to less than 120 runs. So uh, hopefully that means that we can go get back into a little bit of form. I think we've only scored uh, eight runs in our past two games. So we really need to go and pick that up because we did have a strong start to the season. And we need to start strong uh, from this position here because we are in round 13. So there's only a handful of rounds left to go in the regular season. And we want to make sure that we are towards the top of the tree come playoff time. Because I want to go, I want to pick up a trophy because we haven't been doing it lately in either career mode or any career mode we have just been struggling when it has come to the playoff section of the particular tournament that we are playing in so um, hopefully we can go and fix that because I want a trophy I want another one in the cabinet we haven't had one in a while so we're in round 13 so that means there's about five games left to go um, we are sitting close to the top of the table uh, as I said we have been doing pretty well we were top um, two games ago but we have had two losses uh, in those last two games that's a little bit due to the fact that I haven't been playing very well. Um, I haven't scored many runs, so hopefully we can change that around today. As I said, it is just a small total uh, that we are chasing, so hopefully that does make a difference, and uh, we can go and, as I said, just hopefully get some runs on the board. It doesn't matter if we go out and score with a blazing strike rate today. It really is more about accumulation and just getting some runs on the board. But enough about that. Let's go and get into uh, some series that are happening around the world at present as we speak or due to start. Um, the first one I'm going to talk about is the England-Pakistan series, which has just finished. Um, and I did say in Monday's video I was going to talk about this, so I am going to do that. Um, but a very good series, 2-2, uh, and very enjoyable to watch for the neutral. This is like a series that I didn't watch too much, but I did follow very, very closely. Um, and some real good cricket played all around from both teams. So um, it was a real spectacle to watch. And, you know, there were times uh, and stages in, you know, all the tests where you thought the game was going one way and then it seesawed into another. You know, someone hit 100. Um, you know, someone took a five-wicket bag. Yasir Shah was impressive as ever. Uh, Mohan Ali, I was quite impressed with him. I believe he was dropped earlier in the series, um, but came back, scored 100, and, you know, was very useful with his off spin. I wouldn't say that he's a front-line spinner in this English side, um, but they do have a very, I wouldn't say a strange uh, middle to lower order, but they do have a lot of all-rounders in their side. I mean, when you think of the likes... Um, you know, Ben Stokes is a guy who's almost guaranteed a spot if he's fit. Um, so you think you put him in about number six or even number seven. You've got your wicket keeper at six and seven, which is probably going to be Johnny Bairstow because he's backed up. Um, again, he scored some good runs in the series. And then you've got the likes of uh, Chris Wokes, Mo and Ali, and then your front line bowlers. So there are plenty of options uh, for this English side. And that's something that they really have worked on. Because they did go through that patch, um, you know, when they are obviously knocked out of the Cricket World Cup in the group stage. Um, they went through a patch and went through a bit of a rebuilding phase, shall we say. Um, not just in their one-day team, but in their test team as well. And they brought some players back in there. I still think there's a few areas for improvement. Jane Vince, I'm not convinced um, on his selection at all on the side. He's struggled all series. Um, and Gary Balance coming back in again. I'm not too sure about that. I think there may possibly be some better players out there uh, that could go and fill those spots. It was hard because Ben Stokes, I think, only played the first two tests, um, and he's a guy who almost is guaranteed to play every game for the English side because of his all-round ability. Um, but So that finished up there. Pakistan, they had a pretty good series as well. They are very close, I believe, uh, to becoming the world number one test side. And, you know, that is an achievement in itself for Pakistan. There was an article going around, you know, just saying how impressive that is because I don't think they've played a home test um, in about six years. So a very, very good effort. A lot of people say that UAE is almost their second home, um, but the Pakistan players themselves have said, you know, it is difficult. There's nothing quite like home. Um, it's not quite the same, you know. It is still a home away from home. Um, but I guess it would kind of be like New Zealand playing their games in Australia, you know, different kind of surfaces, um, different fan base. Obviously, it's completely different not playing in front of your own crowd. Um, so, I mean, well done to Pakistan. Obviously, Mizbah al Haq and the Pakistani coaching team for really going and moulding this Pakistan team possibly into a number one test side they are very very close to it and when they're on Pakistan are one of those teams that can just be absolutely electric and beat anyone and we have seen that in the past before but they have just lacked that consistency um, so that's that series there that's done and dusted I'm not sure um, if there's one day or anything like that left to come in that series um, or if it was just a test match series I'm not 100% sure but um, 
that one is done and dusted, the Test Series. Um, another Test Series that is almost done as well is the Australia-Sri Lanka game. Um, that is the third Test. That is coming into its final day as well, final day today. Um, I believe when, when this video goes up, I think that may have started. But um, again, that series as well has been a series that I wouldn't say has been dominated by Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka currently up 2-0 in the series, um, three match ser a three-match series, that one. Um, but, you know, it has been uh, another series that has been fairly evenly poised. It's been, you know, very topsy-turvy and very enjoyable to watch for the neutral, which I think is really good because that's something uh, that Test Cricket hasn't had in a while. It hasn't really been appealing uh, to the neutral. But I think these series have been very, very entertaining. The Australians had made um, quite a few wholesale changes, I must say, um, for this Test match here. And it did work out for them quite well um, in the first innings. Uh, Sean Marsh coming in for Joe Burns, and I think Moises on Reeks came in for Kawaja, and they had a wee reshuffle um, of the batting lineup. Moises didn't go too well, but Sean Marsh did manage to pick up a century um, in his first at bat. Still to come uh, in Australia's second innings, which I believe will be um, there will be an overnight declaration by Sri Lanka in my mind. I think they're about 287 ahead. Uh, and the pitch is starting, I think, to do a little bit, you know, and Australia have just taken the new ball. So mentally for them, it is going to be tough uh, to not go and I guess just head straight into bat. It is going to be difficult to know that they haven't taken 20 wickets against the Sri Lankan side, which was taken apart uh, in a recent tour of England. But we will have to wait and see what happens with that there. As I said, 287, it still is very chaseable uh, for the Australian side, especially when you look at their batting lineup. They can go and get it done. I mean, Warner could go off and just hit you an absolute crazy, uh, you know, 60, 70, 80 runs, and there's a good portion of the total chased, uh, chased down already. Um, and he could get it in quick time, which would help their cause too. So. We will have to wait and see there. Harath has been incredible in the series, as usual. I think he's picked up... Uh, I think now he has overtaken Muralitharan for most wickets taken in Sri Lanka. Not in general. He's still only taken about 300. He's miles, miles away uh, from Murali, But... <clears throat> That's still a very good achievement for Harath, and um, it'll be interesting to see what does happen when he does retire, because he's 38 now. Um, you know, he, he obviously doesn't have too much longer left. And they have gone and found uh, some decent spinners, I guess, to go and replace him. And, I mean, in this third test, I think they've gone with uh, three frontline spinners and then a part-timer. And then they've gone with Lackmail, the only pacer, and Angelo Matthews, I guess, to be that second seamer if needed. But uh, I guess that's just the Sri Lankan pitches. And, you know, you do have to play to your strengths. It's the same as if you played in... Uh, you know, New Zealand, Australia, England. You wouldn't go in with a three-prong uh, spin attack because that's just not how it works. You may see teams go in with a four-prong seam attack, and we have seen that before uh, here in New Zealand. So you just got to play to your strengths, um, and that's what Sri Lanka have done in this series. You know, they've played to their strengths. A lot of people are saying that the pitchers have won uh, Sri Lanka this series, but I don't think that's the case because they have been susceptible with the bat too, and it really is just about trying to stick it in. And I think a lot of players have been trying to play too quick in this series, and and have just gone and given their wickets away in key moments of the game. You know, just when they're starting to rebuild or just when they're starting to get on top, then there is a collapse of wickets, which we have seen uh, quite often, as I said, in this series. That's a nice wee front foot pull shot as well off Kunta Nile to move us to 49. And as I said, we have been struggling as of late, but we've done pretty well today so far. We're on 49, striking at a decent strike rate too. It does make it easy only chasing down less than 120 as well. It just means that there is less pressure on uh, to go and get those runs. But we will go have a bit of a slog to go and bring up our 50. A little bit risky because I did really want to go and pick up that 50 because it has been, uh, you know, a few innings between going and getting one there. But 86, and what this is going to do, this is going to be huge for our net run rate as well because, oh my God, Cliffy, what are you doing? I was just talking it up and saying it's going to be huge for our net run rate. Miss an absolute sitter. That is an absolute sitter. It was slow. It was in swinging. Plenty of time to play it. Just played all around the front pad, and we are gone LBW. But 53 off 31, we can't complain too much about that, and hopefully Jack Callis and Bizzler can bring it home 
uh, in rather quick fashion, which is what they have gone and done. Callus 22 off 10. Uh, we get the man of the match, and we win with eight overs and four balls left to spare. So that is a big, big win, and nine wickets in the tank as well. So we can't complain too much about that. But anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap things up here. Do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please remember to leave a like. If you are new, please do subscribe. Make sure you check out my Facebook and Twitter links. That can be found down below in the description. Hope you're having a good week so far. Make sure you tune in tomorrow. I've got more Rugby Challenge 3, 7s be a pro career mode. Make sure you do not miss that.